What's up, YouTube? Thanks for tuning in to Dorian.slash. Today I want to cover an important subject that many people don't think about until it's too late. Backups. In this video, I'm mostly going to cover backing up personal files, but I'll also cover a bit of system backups as well. I'm also going to cover where you should back up the data as well. So let's get started. There are different ways of backing up your data, and it depends on what you're backing up. You can back up your entire system, which takes a lot of storage room. You can do backups in system snapshots, which saves your system's configuration, but doesn't necessarily save your personal files. System snapshots are more to preserve your system, as in your operating system. So if you do an upgrade or you install a driver and things go wrong, you can always revert back to a working state. Then there's backing up your personal data, which to many people is the most important of all. You can always reinstall Linux, but losing your personal data like important documents and photos can be a big deal. I've personally been a repeated victim of data loss due to corrupt files and complete hard drive failure. It does happen. Luckily, I've had fairly recent backups, and in one case, I was able to recover data off of a hard drive that was failing before it completely died. I have tons of data that's important to me, like documents, databases, and software, but some of the most important things are also photos. I've been using digital cameras pretty much since they first came out, and I have every single photo I've ever taken backed up somewhere. These are important memories that you don't want to lose. Pictures of friends, family, my wedding, and all the trips and vacations I've been on. And I almost think that I'd be more upset if I lost the photos than the documents. There are a lot of solutions to preserve your documents and photos out there. And one of the simpler ways is to just burn a DVD or copy files to a USB stick or an external hard drive. You can also back up your files to the cloud, which can be one of many online storage services available and they usually give you a small amount of storage for free, which can be expanded to a larger size for a monthly fee. But that can make it difficult when you have a lot of files because you have to keep track of what you've already backed up. So that the next time you wanna update your backups, you back up only what you haven't already backed up. So you're dealing with dates and did I back that up? Did I back that up? I don't remember this and that. So yeah. Luckily, in Linux, you have many options. You can use a command line tool called rsync, which will copy files for you and can even be set to skip over files that are already backed up to speed up the process. But there are simpler tools out there. One of the nicest that comes with Ubuntu and other GNOME distributions is Backups, and its real name is Dejadupe. This is the one tool that I will recommend above all others for the average user when you want to back up your personal documents and photos, simply because it's so easy to use and it's very reliable. And it's also integrated into Nautilus. Dejadupe performs what's called differential backups. And it's great because it can be set to run automatically on a schedule. This means that your first backup will be huge because it will be all your data but the next time it runs, it will only back up files that have been added or changed since the last backup. What this also allows you to do is roll back changes on a file. So if you changed a document and saved it, but then you realized you made a mistake, you can recover the old version from the last backup. This also works with photos in case you accidentally made a bad edit. It will even restore files that you deleted by accident. It also has a manual backup option. So if you're about to start working on a project, you can click backup now to ensure you have a good copy, safe and sound. Dejadupe can also be installed if you're using KDE or any other desktop environment. Just be aware that it'll pull some GNOME dependencies along with it in order for it to work. It's really easy to use. You just select the folders that you want saved, which is normally just your home folder. Choose which ones you want to exclude or ignore and then schedule it or just stick to manual backups. Now, I do recommend that you exclude certain large folders that you don't need backed up. So if you're planning to back up your entire home folder, exclude downloads, which is already selected by default. Also the trash, you don't need to do that. Other folders that you might want to exclude, which you can add just by clicking the plus button here, are hidden by default. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is press Control H, which will show you all your hidden folders, all the ones that start with a period. So for example, cache and steam, are ones that you probably want to exclude because cache is application cache. So there's your browser's cache and different applications, texture caches and whatnot. And then Steam, you'll have all your games in here. So you could use Steam 
itself and use its own backup system to back up your games and then keep this out of here. And in fact, what you can do is just select all of these and keep in mind, if you have your own custom icons and your own custom themes, I'm just gonna hold control and click on these to deselect them because I do want my icons and my themes backed up unless I've backed them up somewhere else, which I have, so I will do this. Then click add and now all those hidden folders will be excluded from the backup, which will make it a lot smaller. Most of these are application settings and configurations, which you don't really require. If you restore your system, it will repopulate its configuration file and settings once you start it up the first time. However, the settings that you set before will not be set. So for example, GIMP, if I want to keep the settings how they were, then maybe I do want to include this so I can remove that. That way, when I do a restore, my settings for GIMP are also restored. There are plenty of other tools available to back up your personal files, such as back in time, for example, but to keep this video from being much longer, I won't cover every option out there. Now, before I cover system backups, I want to talk about where you should back up your files. This can be just as important. If you have a storage partition on the same drive as your OS, you don't want to back up your files there because if your hard drive dies, you lose both your OS and your backups. If you have a second hard drive in your computer, this is a better option, but if you have a major system failure which damages or corrupts all your drives, you're in the same boat. Cloud-based backups are a good solution, but it can be slow. I have over 20 gigs of photos alone, so that's not a really good solution for me. External hard drives are a good option. If you feel your data is extra precious, you can even have two external hard drives with backups in case one of those drives fails. The downside to using external drives is that they have to be connected to do the backups. This is fine if you only feel you need to do backups once a week and you're going to do them manually, but it's not good for scheduled daily backups because every time the scheduler kicks off, it's going to look for that folder. and if your external drive isn't plugged in, it's not going to find the location of where to put the files. I use an external network RAID device, commonly referred to as a NAS. It's like an external hard drive that you plug into your home network. This creates a network drive which you can access at any time when you're on your network. The one I have is a Lassie RAID 5 NAS. RAID is super important to me. A regular external hard drive can still fail, which means you've lost all your data. The RAID 5 array that I use has four hard drives in it that act as one, but the data is spread across all four drives, which includes something called parity data. What this does is create a system where if one of the drives fail, none of the data is lost. I would simply replace the dead hard drive and the data would be rebuilt into the new hard drive using all the information from the other three drives. This is my NAS, which is available from all my computers, from any operating system, provided you, of course, have the username and password to access it. If you have a NAS on your home network, you would access it by clicking Other Locations, and here you would type in the IP, SMB colon slash slash and the IP address. Then when you connect, the first time, it's going to ask you for your username and password. Now I selected Remember Forever, so I never have to enter it again. This is important if you want to save your files to your NAS. As you can see here, my storage location I've set to network server instead of local folder. If you choose local folder, it's going to save it somewhere on one of your hard drives. By choosing network server, you're able to enter smb colon slash slash your username at the IP address of your NAS slash the name of the share. In my case is public and then you give the folder a name and it will save it in that folder. So now since I've already done that, if I go back to overview and say backup now, it will begin the backup process on its own. Depending on what data you're saving, it might be important for you to password protect it, but remember if you put in a password and you lose your password, you won't be able to recover it. I typically allow restoring without a password simply because my NAS is already password protected and it's in my house, so I'm not too worried. Click on forward and it will begin scanning all your documents. And like I said, it, it warns you here, creating the first backup, this may take a while. As I mentioned before, this is differential backup. So it's going to back up absolutely everything. And then once that's done, every backup afterwards is only gonna save the changes. 
So it's not going to resave everything every time. It's only going to save new files and files that are changed. So I'm going to cancel this. And now I'm going to move on to system backups. So system backups preserve your system state and typically don't back up your personal files. Some options are built into the distro, such as OpenSUSE's Snapper. In this case, during the installation of the OS, you need to make your OS partition a BTRFS partition instead of ext4. However, you can quickly and easily convert your ext4 partition into BTRFS after the fact, and this can also be quickly undone. This method can also be used in Ubuntu, or when you install Ubuntu, you can also choose to use LVM on your disks, which also allows system snapshots and rollbacks. These methods, however, are complex and it'll take much longer to explain. And in fact, I might not try to cover LVM since it's not something very fun for the average user to work with. You can, however, check my video on OpenSUSE where I show you Snapper and talk about BTRFS snapshots a little. Look for the link in the corner here and you can check that out or wait till the end of the video. One of the easier tools to create snapshots, which you can use right now, is called TimeShift. I'll open that right now. When you first open it, it asks for your password. I'll put a link in the description of where to find it. It's pretty easy to use and straightforward to figure out. The big downside is that it does not support network saves. So let me just show you time shift a bit. As I've said, it's pretty straightforward. You have your create, your restore, you can delete, browse, settings, and the wizard. Let's check out the settings. So when you first start it up for the first time, it's gonna ask you if you want rsync or BTRFS snapshots. I suggest rsync. The location tab lets you set where you want your files to be stored. Now, time shift only backs up to Linux partitions and it won't back up to a Windows partition or a network drive, so that's a big downside. You can also set a schedule, monthly, weekly, daily, even hourly. As you can see, I disabled it. It was daily, which means it's enabled. I uncheck that because I don't like the automatic backups. Under the Users tab, it's going to, by default, exclude your home folders. You can include them if you want, but I recommend you save your personal files separately, but that is your choice. Under Filters, you can add exclusions. And this is similar to what I showed you earlier on Deja Dupe, where you can add folders and files to exclude from the backup. That's pretty much it for the settings. So I did two snapshots earlier, and this one was a, a large one that took about 10 minutes and I'm gonna create another one right now. So you can see it is skipping all the files that have no change and only backing up files that have changed. And that was it, pretty quick. Now, if tomorrow something happens and I want to restore, I would just click here, click restore. Now, it's not only gonna restore those 20 something files that change, it's gonna restore everything up to this point. And I can also go further back and further back. Now, personally, I don't like system snapshots because they don't always work properly and it's usually best to just reinstall the OS and restore your personal files and settings. Yes, you do have to reinstall the software you use, but honestly, it's the best way to do it. If for some reason your system doesn't boot graphically to get to this point, you can also use time shift from the command line. It's not as easy to use, but if you follow the help you can pretty much figure it out. I hope that I didn't instill any fear in you guys about losing all your files and your documents. It's not something that happens often, to be honest, but when it does happen, that's when you realize, oh crap, that file is gone, those pictures are gone. And then by that point, it's too late. So go out there guys, back up your files, get an external drive, in invest in a drive, invest in a NAS. It's totally worth it. If you don't have stuff on the computer, you don't have pictures on the computer, you really don't care, ignore this video altogether. But thanks for watching anyways. So anyways, that's all I got for today, guys. If you like the video, don't forget to click like. And if you're not subscribed, please do it. Do it now. And feel free to also check out my Patreon page, link in the description. And as always, you can follow me over on Twitter at Dorian.slash. Till next time, guys. Bash on.